Jesse Jennings and welcome to Let's Paint Live, our monthly paint party where I teach you to paint a full painting in just about an hour. Um, so today we're painting a really fun seasonal pumpkin um, just in time for Halloween and fall and it's called sweater weather. So um, there's a lot of really fun techniques in this. I'm going to show you how to do a gingham or a buffalo plaid pattern on a 3D surface and then we're also going to paint this really simple and fun blended uh, fall leaf on top of it. So. Um, you can do any colors you want for this. Of course, as always, we'll be using our Let's Paint Live kit, which I'll get into the more specific um, supplies in just a second, but just really excited to paint this pumpkin with you guys tonight. Um, so I do want to let you know that we are live in the studio today. So we have Emma Panuski here also in the studio. So if you have any comments or questions as we are progressing through our pumpkin painting, please feel free to drop those in the comments um, and Emma will either relay them to me or answer them herself. So. Um, we'd love to hear uh, where you're painting from, if you're painting along. We'd also love to hear, you know, what you, you're crafting for the fall. If you've already painted some pumpkins this year, we'd love to hear what you painted on them. Um, so let's go ahead and get started, and I will tell you what supplies we need. Okay, so of course we need our faux pumpkin. So I get asked this question all the time while we're doing pumpkin crafts, whether you can paint it on a real pumpkin or not. Um, and the answer is you absolutely can paint it on a real pumpkin. Acrylic paint works great on real pumpkins. The only thing is that you just have to keep in mind um, that it's not going to last very long. So for me personally, when I'm crafting or I'm painting something like this um, and I'm putting this much effort into something, I want to paint it onto something that I know will last for uh, many seasons to come and not just for one year. So just something to keep in mind. But if all you have are fresh pumpkins, by all means, you can paint it on those. Um, so of course I got my pumpkin. This one in particular is a 10 inch pumpkin. It's pretty smooth um, and I purchased this one at Michael's. but. All of the craft stores this time of year have really great pumpkins just like this one. Um, I've got my folk art brushes. So um, these brushes are from the um, 10 piece variety set, which comes in our Let's Paint Live kit, which you can purchase on um, flatonline.com. And the specific brushes I'll be using are my one inch flat or three quarters inch flat, um, a half inch flat or a number um, eight. And I actually have a couple half inch flats here. And then my number six round. So just kind of like a liner brush, like a very small round brush. Um, I also have my palette paper, paper towels, and my water basin for cleaning my brushes and putting my paint on. And I do have a hair dryer here tonight, so we often use a hair dryer for our live classes like this just to kind of keep things moving along so we don't have to wait too long for drying times. And then of course, as always, we're using our favorite paints, Folk Art Acrylics. Um, and all of these paints I'm about to name to you are in our Let's Paint Live kit. So again, if you guys have not picked that up, make sure to check it out because with that kit, you can paint any of our Let's Paint Live paintings, which are dozens and dozens. I think we have over a hundred paintings, so make sure to check out the Let's Paint Live kit. Um, we have Thicket, Aqua, Daffodil Yellow, Pure Orange, Cardinal Red, Berry Wine, Medium Gray, and Wicker White. So make sure you have those colors um, or any colors that are similar, or if you're planning on doing a different color scheme for your plaid and your leaf tonight, feel free to switch it up a little and be creative. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go get started unless you have any questions on supplies, Em. No, no questions yet. People are just saying hi, where they're from. I think we're all excited to paint some tonight. Awesome, cool. Um, okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are just gonna um, base coat our pumpkin white. Um, and of course, you might be thinking, well, my pumpkin's already white, but A, I wanna give you guys time to um, paint along with me if your pumpkin isn't white. And B, this one's kind of like a yellowy cream color and I really want it to be more white. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my wicker white and put it out on my palette. And I'm gonna grab the largest of my flat brushes and I'm just going to do a nice even coat of wicker white onto my pumpkin. And of course, it's gonna cover really well because A, it's folk art paint, so it just has awesome coverage. And B, I'm painting white on a very similar color, so it's not gonna take much. So again, if you guys have a different color pumpkin, if you're on an orange pumpkin or something, um, now is the time for you guys to go ahead and paint your pumpkin white with me. And again, I've got wicker white here from our Let's Paint Live kit, and I'm using the largest of my flat brushes, so a 3 fourths inch flat or a 1 inch flat is perfect for this part. And just while you're going ahead and painting that white, um, Tashika, I hope I said your name right, uh, they have a question. They want to know, could you use a paper mache pumpkin? Oh, for sure. That's a great idea. Um, that's like kind of a lesser known, you know, faux pumpkin, but yeah, that'll work great. Paper mache takes our folk art acrylic paints super well. Um, yeah, I love that idea. You totally can. Or styrofoam pumpkins even this would work on. Really any, any pumpkins you would craft on, you could do this painting on. And I just want to note 
too, um, I think a lot of times when people are base coating, they tend to um, just want to kind of glob paint on there just to get it over with and make sure you have as much paint on as possible so you only have to do one coat, which I totally understand. That's super relatable as an inpatient uh, crafter myself. Um, but it really does pay off to just do nice, smooth, even coats of paint, just enough to cover the surface. You don't need any more than you need to just smoothly cover the surface. Um, if you put too much paint on, um, A, it's just gonna take longer to dry, so you're really not saving yourself much time in the long run. And B, um, if you put too much acrylic paint on at once without giving it time to uh, dry between layers, it could crack, especially if you hit it with a hair dryer and try to dry it quickly like we're gonna be doing tonight. Um, and of course, we don't want our paint to crack. We want it to be nice and smooth um, and to dry um, on its own and nice and evenly. So just nice smooth coats, just a nice, just enough to cover the surface. Where's everybody from, ma'am? Huh? Let's see, we have some people tuning in from California, Pennsylvania, awesome. Virginia, Texas, Indiana. Very cool, welcome guys. I'm so happy to have you all here tonight painting with us. Yeah, absolutely. And don't forget, um, after this live class is over, if you're not painting with us or if you feel like the pace isn't good for you, um, this will be saved on our Facebook page and it will also be on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you did not know, Plaid Crafts has a YouTube channel, so you can head over there and like and subscribe. Um, and you can watch this class at any time on your own time. So you could pause it and rewind it as much as you need. You don't have to worry about keeping up with the live pace. You can just do it on your own time. And a little more white paint. little patch here and then I will go ahead and I will dry it with my hair dryer. Okay, you can kind of get the bottom later um, or you can not because you won't be able to see it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rinse my brush off. And then like I said, I'm going to go ahead and grab my hair dryer and I'm just going to make sure my wipe is nice and dry. Um, and I always get asked this question, what setting to put your hair dryer on? So I put it on the highest air setting and then I kind of toggle between the warm and cool. I have this little cool button here. So I start off warm on the highest air setting and then I'll switch to cool and just kind of go back and forth. I find that's the best way to dry my paint. But it's kind of preference. Okay, so my pumpkin feels nice and dry, um, so we can go ahead and get started on the fun part, which is painting this buffalo plaid or gingham pattern, um, however you want to think of it for the fall season, um, but it's a lot of fun. So 
a lot of you ha may have seen some of our tutorials. We've done it um, kind of in a few places on our TikTok channel, on our Instagram Reels. You've even done it once or twice here on a Facebook Live where we've taught you how to use tape and to tape off and make your very own buffalo plaid. So um, that works great for flat surfaces, for sign making and things like this, but um, it doesn't really apply as well for doing 3D surfaces, especially round surfaces, I should say. So I'm going to teach you a different way, which is a little bit looser. We're going to hand paint our buffalo plaid, but you still get a really fun result and it still really reads as that pattern. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and grab some of my medium gray, again from our Let's Paint Live kit. Oops. Put a little bit of that on my palette. And I'm going to grab my uh, largest flat brush, so again, the 3 4 inch or the 1 inch flat. And I'm going to pick up some water and I'm going to water down my gray paint a little. So just kind of let you know what we're going to do. Um, we are going to water down our paint just ever so slightly so it's a little bit transparent. And we're going to paint the lines in this grid so where it overlaps is it's going to be a little bit darker and that's going to give us that buffalo plaid pattern. So I'm going to get a little bit of water on my brush and put it on my palette to kind of water down that gray a little bit. We don't want it to be super watery and we do want it to be smooth so you can see there's kind of like the areas of paint that are still in there. You want to make sure to kind of mix those in because we want it to be nice and smooth. You don't want those lumps of paint in there because those will just show right up when we go to paint it onto our white pumpkin. So it's kind of an inky consistency. And then I'll blot some of that off just so we can, you can kind of see here, just enough to kind of um, keep the bristles wet with that uh, diluted paint. Um, but it's not, it's not terribly full. I blotted some of it off my paper towel. So start with a little bit. You can always go back and add more um, with this sort of transparent effect we're about to do. So, so the first lines we're going to do are the vertical lines, so the lines going up and down. Um, and the reason we're going to do those first is because we kind of have a built-in guide in our pumpkin. So the natural ridges in the pumpkin are going to act as our guide. We're going to follow those ridges and paint stripes all the way around. And then we'll use the spacing for those stripes to paint our horizontal stripes going around. And it'll make it a little bit easier to paint by hand. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to find the ridges. So I'll find one ridge and I'll go between, kind of go between the two, like kind of where the, the peaks and the valleys. I'm going to go in the valley. So I'm going to start at the top. You can see how it's, it's watered down. And I'm just going to try my best to keep my hand as steady as I can, and I'm kind of moving my pumpkin as I go. I'm moving my hand as I get to the bottom, but mostly my pumpkin is moving, so my hand can stay nice and still to get that line as straight as possible. Do you guys see how I did that? I moved to the next little ridge here, and I'm moving the pumpkin. I'm tilting it and keeping my hand still. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I'm kind of just spreading it out a little there. Go into the next ridge, so I'm going to keep my hand pretty still, and I'm going to move the pumpkin. Ran out of paint. I'm going to move the pumpkin so that I get a fairly straight line. And guys, if it's not perfect, don't stress about it, okay? This is a very loose pumpkin, and we're really going to focus on the leaf that we're painting on top. This is just meant to be the background. So if it's not totally perfect, don't worry about it. That is okay. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. Move the pumpkin and keep my hand steady. And again, you can kind of, where it starts off kind of a little more um, concentrated, you can just spread that out a little. And I'm gonna keep doing this all the way around. How's everyone doing out there, Em? Good, we have a lot of people watching. Awesome, welcome everyone, I'm so happy you're here. My favorite month of the year, October. I'm a big Halloween lover, so this is a really fun fun paint night for me tonight. Yeah, this is an exciting one for sure. I don't remember the last time, if ever, we've painted on anything else besides a flat canvas. I know, we do ornaments or, for Christmas, yeah. but I can't remember ever doing a pumpkin. Yeah. You're right. You're gonna keep going until you've covered the entire pumpkin in these stripes. And again, you can follow the ridges as best you can and use them as a guide to get them as evenly spaced as you can. Again, we're just eyeballing it, so if it's not perfect, that is okay. It's not really meant to be perfect. It's meant to be kind of loose for this pumpkin design. And again, I'm just spreading it out where it's pooled a little. And I'm gonna go for just a few more stripes. And if you wanted to, you could have done um, thinner lines. You, you could have gotten a, a finer plaid pattern. 
um, but I kind of like this bold, bold plaid we're getting with this wider brush. And also keeping in mind it would take you a little bit longer if you had a, a narrower brush. And Jesse, Kristen says, excited for the ornaments. Oh yeah, we do ornaments <laughs> every December. It's always a lot of fun, so um, that's gonna that should be a blast. Okay, so this will be our last stripe. And I'm just spreading that out. Again, just where it's pooling, I'm just kind of spreading it back out. You don't want it to be too wet, so I'm just trying to sort of mop up those areas with my brush a little, because I don't want it running all over the place when we go and tilt our pumpkin. So if you decide to dry your pumpkin now, just be careful because we did dilute this paint with water, so you don't want it to start uh, running everywhere. If you hit this with a hairdryer, the little droplets of, you know, paint and water are going to start running and it's going to get all over um, outside of the lines that we just carefully painted. So um, that's why I'm kind of, you can see, blotting my brush and sort of picking up some of that excess paint so that I can uh, dry it with my hair dryer and I don't have to worry about that happening. So you can see I just got all that excess paint. So now I'm going to go ahead and dry this before we do our horizontal stripes. So since we had the, the uh, paint diluted, it dried really quickly. So now we can go ahead and we don't have to worry about tilting our pumpkin. Oops, it's a little wet right there. Um, we don't have to worry about tilting our pumpkin because we dried it, but I'm actually gonna dry it just another minute because I found a wet spot. Okay, now we really are done um, drying it for that. For now, um, so now we can go ahead, and we don't have to worry about tilting our pumpkin because it's not going to run everywhere. And we're going to do really the same thing we just did with our vertical stripes. So we're going to do it going around the pumpkin. Um, so we're going to water down our gr uh, medium gray just a little bit. Make sure you get all of those little lumps of paint mixed into the water so it's nice and smooth. Kind like I said before, kind of an inky consistency. And I'm still using my one inch brush or three quarters inch is good too. And I'm gonna start in the middle just so I have them fairly evenly spaced. And I'm gonna start at one, um, uh, one stripe and I'm gonna go um, kind of one stripe at a time just to kind of make sure that's going straight. If I just try to start going like whoop with like one straight line, most likely it'll be really crooked and I'm gonna end up uh, going astray and I'm just not gonna meet back around at the other side, which is of course what we want to happen. So um, if you have a, a side that you like for the back, go ahead and start there. So in case it doesn't meet back up, you know, if your plan kind of goes astray, um, it doesn't matter because it'll be the back. So here I have this kind of dent on my pumpkin. So I'm gonna start here as my back and I'm gonna go in the middle and I'm gonna connect these two. And then I'm gonna do my best to go as level as I can, connecting each stripe as I go. And again, trying to be level, you can kind of make sure you get a good angle so you can see your pumpkin upright to make sure that you're not going up or going down by accident. We're just connecting these. Lines. So Jess, while you connect your lines, um, we have a couple questions. Okay. Kristen said, could you use like a Payne's gray, which is naturally more transparent instead of watering down a gray, or would that be too dark? Um, you could use a Payne's Gray, yeah, like you said, it, it is more transparent and just make sure you do add water to it still. Um, the reason we're using medium gray is because this is the gray in our Let's Paint Live kit. So 
Um, that's the great thing about our Let's Paint Live kit is every single painting that we do every month that we have been doing for years and will do for years to come, I'm sure, um, can be painted with that kit. So I always make sure to use the paintings and the paints in those kits for those of you who have invested in that um, um, to make sure that you can paint along every time. So yes, Payne's Gray would work great. Whatever you have at home that's similar will work great, but tonight uh, we are using the medium gray because it's in our kit. And then another question, Suzanne said, this is new to me, I'm loving it. How long to dry naturally? And I'm not sure if Suzanne means the watered down paint or just mm -hmm. our regular full guard acrylic. Yeah, our regular acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. So I would give it, you know, uh, if you have a thick coat of paint on there, just straight acrylic paint, I would give it between 20 minutes and 40 minutes to make sure it's nice and dry. Um, but with this watered down, just maybe five minutes or so really, it's gonna dry pretty quick because it's mostly water. So it's gonna, the water's gonna evaporate super quick. Um, it's kind of like watercolor almost, where it's just going to dry nice and fast. So do the same thing. I'm going to go about a you know inch below or so, and I'm going to maybe a little more than an inch. Do the same thing all around this bottom area. And you can see here, I'm kind of doing a more of a bold plaid here. It's a little bit wider, but that's okay. I like the look of this too. It feels very fall, like a fall tablecloth or something. <laughs> And again, I want to make sure I'm keeping it at as level as I can so that I can do my best to connect it when we come around to the other side. And again, guys, just kind of, if you start and stop your lines um, on the same side every time, if it doesn't connect in the back, it is okay. That will just be the back of the pumpkin. You can put it on your porch without facing your house and no one will ever know. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna go above our first line. I'm going to connect these. And Jesse, we have another question. Holly wants to know, why aren't you taping it? Great question. So the reason we're not taping it is because um, you definitely could. And I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of great tutorials that our content team has made um, on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and here on Facebook, where we show you how to do a buffalo plaid pattern using tape. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys how you can do it on a round object. So a lot of times um, when you're painting on round objects, especially if you're doing something really irregular like a pumpkin, especially if you're doing a real pumpkin where it could be any, any shape ever, um, it's hard to tape it. You can't get your line straight because your shape is not straight. So I just wanted to give you guys another little trick to you know, put up your sleeve so you can do this pattern on 3D surfaces as well as your flat surfaces with your tape. Awesome. And like Jess was saying, we have a lot of great uh, short little videos on all of our social media platforms for you guys to go check out. And that's um, the same name here as it is on Facebook. It's Plaid Crafts. We're on Instagram, TikTok, so go check us out. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got three stripes, and that's looking good. I like that. But I am going to add one more stripe up here at the top just because it's kind of a, a big gap there. So I'm going to do the same thing we've been doing. I'm going to find my, my back where I've been starting to make sure I always start and stop in the same area in case I need a back. And Denise said, looks fun, I'm going to try it. Awesome, Denise, I would love to see. Um, guys, if you ever decide to post any of your projects um, on social media, on Instagram or Facebook or anywhere really, We'd love to see them. So if you hashtag plaid crafts, that is how we know that you used our products on your crafts. Um, you have the chance of being shared on our Fan Friday on Instagram. Uh, but we just love getting inspired by you guys. We love seeing what you are making at home using our products because um, you guys out there are all so creative. And we just love to see what you guys have come up with using our paints. Okay. So that is nice and uh, finished. All of the lines are in. So again, you can see on my original one, I did a few more. My lines were a little thinner, but I like the different look. It's a little bit of a variety and that's okay. Either way looks great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna dry that off with my hair dryer before we move on to our next step.
right, so that is mostly dry. Um, so now we have a really fun little checkerboard thing going here, but we really want, um, you know, that really classic buffalo plaid. What makes it look like buffalo plaid is that where the lines cross, it is much darker. So if it's a black and white plaid, of course, you're going to have the white background. In between, the lines are gray, and then where the two lines meet, it is going to be black. Um, so we just want to darken our little cross sections a little bit with just some more um, medium gray. So you can see here, I've changed it up a little. It's not as watered down. I'm still pulling from the same pile, so it's not technically pure paint, but I'm not adding water to it this time. So it's definitely thicker. Um, and this is just going to be more opaque. It's not going to be transparent, like I said, because we didn't add any extra water to it. So we're going to go through, and where all the lines are crossing, we're going to do a little swatch of um, paint there to just make it look more dark and more opaque. So I'll show you what I mean. So here, for example, the two lines are crossing there. So your line should be the exact width of your brush. Make sure you're using the same brush, and it should be really simple to do. I'm just going to pull across and make that a little bit darker. And I'm going to continue this all over my pumpkin wherever I have two lines intersecting just to darken those areas to make our really drive home that idea of buffalo plaid. So it looks a little bit more like buffalo plaid and less just like a, a grid. I'm gonna do this for our, all the areas where the two lines cross over. And you'll see this really does make a big difference. So we're kind of just cheating and you know, this is a faux plaid anyway because we're painting it, but we just want to make sure that we really see that motif. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this. And like Jesse said in the beginning of our live, sh live stream tonight, you guys, we'd love to know uh, what Halloween crafts you're crafting at home. If you're painting along with us tonight, if you're just watching now, we are going to paint later. We'd love to know all that good stuff in the comment section. Yeah. Again, we're just filling in, making it a little darker in the cross sections so it looks a little bit more like buffalo plaid. And please keep in mind it doesn't need to be perfect. Of course, plaid typically is perfect because it's just kind of the nature of the pattern, but this is like a nice, loose, hand-painted plaid. So if it's not perfect, don't stress about it. It will still look like plaid. As long as you have all the cross sections and you darken all the areas that you need to, it'll look like buffalo plaid no matter what. I would love to hear too, guys, if this is your first Let's Paint Live with us. Um, if you are a longtime watcher, I'd love to hear from you as well. I'd love to hear if you guys have joined us for some of our other live streams maybe, but this is your first Let's Paint Live, please let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear that too. Yeah. Do you want to tell them, Jess, about our um, Let's Paint group on Facebook? I'd love to, yeah, great idea. Um, so right here on Facebook, we have a really fantastic group called Let's Paint with Plaid. Um, and it is a group of painters. We have, I think, like 15,000 members or something ridiculous like that. We've got a ton of members on there. Um, I'm a member, Emma's a member here, our camera man here, Steven is a member. Um, all of the, our family here at Plaid are parts of that group, as well as lots of other painters that you probably know, like Donna Dewberry, Priscilla Hauser, um, just tons of really talented um, artists are on that group. So whether this is the first time you've ever painted before or you've been painting for many years, um, there are people on there for you. So people post their artworks um, every day, all day and people comment on it and give encouragement and feedback when they ask for it. So it's just a really fun um, group. So if you guys have not heard of that before, again, it's called Let's Paint with Plaid and it is right here on Facebook. So just search that title and you sh it should come up and join. Um, and we just have a lot of fun there seeing everybody's artwork. A lot of um, exclusive tutorials are taught there too by Andy Jones and Chris Williams. They do something called Lunch and Learn if you have not heard of that and they do it every Tuesday and Thursday at noon, they teach a really fun tutorial. So um, lots of seasonal paintings and things like that. So make sure to check that out. 
Okay, so once you've done that, you can see here how that really made a difference and it really is starting to look like buffalo plaid, or it really looks like buffalo plaid, I should say, because that's it. So you get that really fun, loose, watercolory buffalo plaid look. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna dry this with our blow dryer. Make sure that it's super dry. Um, you don't want it to be wet at all because we're gonna start painting our fall leaf on top. realize I forgot a few little squares here guys so I didn't do these little cross sections you probably were noticing at home thinking what is she doing Let me fill those in real quick because this is the front of my pumpkin <laughs> okay dry that real quick <laughs> Okay guys, so that's pretty dry. We should be good to start painting on top of that. So um, now is the time to, like I mentioned earlier, if you decided to have one side be the front and one side be the back, if there's one side you prefer, make sure you have that side up because we're gonna start painting our fall leaf right on the front. Um, so I also forgot to mention, you may have seen me signaling to Emma here, I forgot my toothbrush. Um, if you have an old toothbrush you use for painting, it was in the supply list for this class, make sure to have that as well because we'll be doing some really fun fly specking at the end. So if you don't know what fly specking is, um, hang on, that'll be the very last step we do and it's a really fun uh, little tip and trick for your painting. So let's go ahead and start painting our fall leaf. So um, I'm gonna make sure my brush is nice and clean before I move on. I don't wanna leave my brush in the water. Okay, so we're gonna start by putting a little bit of berry wine onto our palette. So berry wine is just like the name says, um, it's this really nice deep burgundy color. I'm gonna put some of that on there. And then I'm gonna grab my small round brush. So this is a number six round. And I'm actually gonna water this down a little bit more. So if you painted with me before, um, I don't usually use a pencil or a pattern or chalk to mark out my designs. I like to do it with watered down paint. So that way, um, it's a much lighter line, so it's easier to cover up. And also, if you make a mistake, you can quickly wipe it away with a wet paper towel and you don't have to worry about um, ruining the design beneath. So I'm gonna get, again, a little bit inky, maybe a little even thinner than our original one. We wanna make sure it's nice and thin, like I said, almost like a watercolor. There's one in my um, 
uh, maybe by the, the TikTok table. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> She's grabbing my toothbrush for me. Okay, so we're gonna start by sort of, like I said, sketching out with our, our paintbrush, make sure I have the right side, um, this fall leaf we have here. So to do that, I'm gonna mark where I want all of the edges of my fall leaf to be, just to kind of map it out on my pumpkin. So I don't wanna start painting right away because it always ends up being crooked um, or it just doesn't end up you know, being, it'll end up being lopsided or something. So I like to know before I start doing all the lines around it, um, where I want my, my leaf to end up and where I want the edges to be and things like that. So I'm gonna start by deciding where I want my, the top of it to be. So let's say the point of the leaf will be about here. So I'll just make a little mark there. Thanks, Sam. And then I'm going to mark where I want the two up, this is kind of a maple leaf, so the two um, upper corners. So we'll put one about here. So it's about diagonal from the top one and it's about two inches down-ish. And then I'm gonna make sure it's as symmetrical as I can get it. And you can kind of also use our pattern, our plaid that we just painted as a grid. So now I'm gonna mark the bottom where I want the bottom of my leaf to be by painting a line for the bottom section, just keep, make sure you guys can see. So it'll be about here. That'll be the bottom of our leaf. So you can see we're kind of starting to get this little bit of a leaf shape here. Kind of, you can see where it's going to be lying anyway. Okay, so now I'm gonna paint lines going this way, a line going down from the top to the bottom. That's gonna be the center of my leaf. And then I'm gonna do two lines going up to those two dots we just made. And that is kind of going to be the, um, the skeleton of our leaf, I guess. So now we can start painting in the outer edges and map it out before we start adding our colors. So up here, we're gonna do a little swoop to the right and a little swoop to the left, just how you would imagine the, leaf is, the leaf's uh, edges to be. So just like that, kind of like a curved arrow. And then the same thing over here, but a little bit lower. And then same over here, but again, a little bit lower. And then those will all kind of meet in the center. Can you see what I did there? Yeah. And then this will come down as well and meet towards the bottom, kind of like almost like a little seashell at the, at the bottom, the way it, we have those little, the little feet on our leaf there. Does that make sense? Totally. Everybody following along? Okay, good. So I'm just gonna add a little more paint to that um, that's not watered down to make sure we can really see that outline well. Kind of reminds me of little fish fins. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and again, I've just got the same brush and I'm just going back over it with my berry wine without any water so we have a nice um, dark outline to follow and start filling our color inside of. And Jesse, while you're finishing that outline, when we were asking people earlier if they um, are new to our Let's Paint Lives, if they are uh, longtime viewers, Denise said, I used to watch all the time, but because of the time difference, it is usually dinner time for me. Ah. So just a reminder to you guys that this live stream is being recorded, so you can always go back at your own leisure and rewatch if yeah. you missed anything or if you wanna make a gal's night out of it. Yeah. I'm sorry your time zone's different. I know, that stinks. <laughs> we always try to make our live streams at a time where, you know, most people in the U.S. at least will be able to watch it at decent hours. Um, but of course, we can't get everybody. <laughs> we can't, yeah, we can't fit everyone in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab one of my small flat brushes. So this is our half inch flat. And I'm going to fill in this whole leaf with our berry wine. So I'm just going to go right up to these little edges that we painted. Just a nice even coat of berry wine filling up this whole leaf. And just keeping in mind, I'm not dipping into the part I've watered down. You wanna make sure you have the fully um, opaque paint for this part. We don't wanna use the water, we, we really won't use the watered down paint for the leaf at all anymore. I'm just filling it in, doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna do a good bit of blending. We're gonna add some more colors on top. I just wanna get a nice base coat for this. OK, 
Okay. You can see we have our little leaf shape here. I'm going to rinse my brush off a little. And now we're going to start adding some of those really beautiful, fun fall colors. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add my red, yellow, and uh, orange to my palette. So I've got my Cardinal Red from my Let's Paint Live kit. I've got my Pure Orange. And my Medium Yellow, again, all from my Let's Paint Live kit. Or my Daffodil Yellow, sorry. Oops, this one's closed. It's a brand new bottle. That's the best. <laughs> a nice open. fresh yeah. bottle. Exactly. Okay. All righty. So now, like I said, we're going to do a little bit of blending. Um, and the way we're going to blend it is by, you know, going uh, darkest on the edges. I'll show you here on our final one to remind you guys. And it's going to get lighter as it goes into the center. So we're going to start blending into the center. Of course, we have our berry wine. It's our darkest color all around the edges. And then we'll go to our red and then orange and then blend some yellow into the middle to really brighten it up. So I've got my flat brush again. So I'm going to pick up some of my cardinal red. And I don't want to go right up to the edges, like I said, because I want to, I want that berry wine to show. But I'm just going to start blending. My my berry wine is wet still. I'm blending my cardinal red by making little dabbing motions just in the center of my leaf to blend that red in. And it's not going to be perfect, but that's okay. If you look at a leaf, it's kind of like blotchy and faded in some areas, but it's got all those beautiful colors blend it in. So how, about, how much paint do you have on your brush, Jesse, when you're... So not very much. So you never want to have, you know, tons of paint globbed onto your brush. The less paint you have on your brush, I'll show you guys, the less paint you have on your brush, really, generally the more control you have over your brush. There's really never a time where you need a ton of paint in your bristles, okay? Even when you're base coating, like I said before, you want just enough to cover the surface. Um, so like I said, a little bit, especially with folk art, goes a long way. Um, I always like to also just kind of rule of thumb, start with a little, add more if you need it. It's much harder to take away. Um, so yeah, really not much. It's about halfway up my bristles, and it's definitely nowhere near the ferrule, which is this metal part. You never really want your paint to get up that high. And we're just dabbing it and then picking up more paint as needed. Okay, so you can see we've got that like nice... It's getting a little bit brighter in the middle with that red. So I'm going to wipe off my brush. I'm not going to dip it in water. I'm just going to wipe it. And I'm going to pick up some of my pure orange. I'm going to do the same exact thing, but leaving a little bit of that red on the outside. So we're kind of getting smaller and smaller as we go into the center. So I'm going to blend in that orange. Again, leaving some of that red and still leaving the berry wine by doing these little dabbing motions. And all these three colors now are all still wet. So they're all blending together on our leaf. I get a really beautiful, like, color changing effect almost. Looks like the leaves are, in the, this leaf is in the middle of fall and it's just in the middle of changing all its colors. Okay. I'm gonna wipe my brush off again. And while those three colors now are still wet, I'm going to pick up a little bit of daffodil yellow. And I'm going to blend that just a little bit into the center. And I'm kind of, you can see I've got, I don't have my brush up and down. I have it almost like, or uh, almost parallel to the surface of my pumpkin. And the reason is I don't want to pick up any of the paint that's beneath it. I don't want to be scooping up the paint I've put down. I want to be blending it down onto the top. If you start going like this, you can see here I'm starting to see that darkness there and that's because I'm picking up paint and I'm seeing that berry wine and that's not what we want. We want to be adding our paint down and blending it into those colors that are already existing on our leaf. Just going right into the center and adding the yellow. Everybody doing okay out there, Em? Yeah, we have lots of people watching. Awesome. Um, 
earlier when you're using the berry wine, Jane said she loves that color. Me too. It's one of my absolute <laughs> favorites. I use it in a lot of my paintings, especially in fall. Yeah, it's so pretty. But it's great for like doing shadows and stuff on florals and stuff too. That's why, again, I keep saying I just love this Let's Paint Life kit because it has every color you could need. It's just such a good value. Especially if you just need to stock up on paint. Like you don't, you know, want to have to go through and put all the separate colors in your cart if you're shopping online and try to think of what you need. It's just like one and done. You just buy the kit and you have all the colors you need. Okay, so now we've got that really pretty blending on our leaf. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some veins to our leaf. So to do that, I'm gonna grab my number six round brush again. And this is the one that we use to kind of map out uh, the outer edges of our leaf. And I'm gonna pick up some of my daffodil yellow. You can see I'm kind of twisting my brush in my paint. And the reason I'm tw doing that, instead of just sort of dabbing my paint up like I would normally do, is because I want that really sharp point on my brush. Probably see it better that way. So if you, if you just dab it, you know, the bristles spread out and you don't get that sharp point. But if you twist it on your palette, you get that nice sharp tip. And we're going to be painting some really fine um, veins on our leaf, so we really want that sharp tip. So I'm doing it again just because it might have dried while I was talking. Okay, so we're going to start at the top and we're going to pull down. I'm not gonna go straight to the top. I'm just gonna pull down loosely down the middle and you can see we did end up kind of picking up a little bit of paint there but it, you still get the effect of the, um, the vein. It's very subtle though, which is a good thing. And then I'm gonna go up this side of my leaf and I'm gonna go on the other side of my leaf and I'm gonna add a few veins off of those as well just like it would be on a leaf. Picking up more paint. And of course we're painting wet on wet on wet on wet. So it's picking up a little bit as we go, but that is okay. It just, it kind of gives you that like subtle, you don't want it to be super dark anyway, because there, of course we wouldn't be like bright yellow veins on a leaf. It would be very subtle and just kind of almost the same color, just you would see the texture. So that's why um, this is kind of a perfect way to do it. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint my stem. I'm just going to have the same brush, pick up some berry wine, and then I'm going to press down the bottom and then lift up to get that little stem. So I'm going to press down and then lift up, get my little stem shape there, and we are all done with our leaf. It's beautiful, Jess. Thanks. So. A lot of fun. We're gonna let that dry for a second. And while that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna paint my stem before we move on to our last step, which is using our toothbrush, which a lot of you I'm sure are curious about um, before we're finished with our, our fall pumpkin. So I'm gonna grab my half inch flat brush. And this is when um, I'm gonna start using, I'm gonna actually pick up some berry wine. So I have my half inch flat brush and my berry wine. And I'm just gonna paint the stem of my pumpkin. Kind of match our leaf here. Has anybody mentioned any of the fall crafts they're doing, Em? No, not so far. Let us know, you guys. What are you crafting at home? We'd love to know. Yeah. I'm really excited for Halloween, I must say. That's probably my favorite part of fall. As much as I love Thanksgiving and all of the, you know, the cold weather and the bonfires and stuff, I just, Halloween is definitely my favorite part. I'm just going around the edges, painting my stem. Okay, and I'm gonna rinse my brush off. Just one coat should be plenty, since we're using our Folk Art acrylics. They're super opaque and have really good coverage. Okay. So now we are moving on to the final step of our uh, sweater weather pumpkin, which like I said before is fly specking. So a lot of you guys out there, whether even if you painted with us or you just like have been painting for a long time, you may know about fly specking. But for those of you who don't, it's a really fun technique to kind of um, give some added detail to a painting and just sort of finish it off. Um, so I'm going to use my aqua for my fly specks. So I'm going to put a little bit of that on my palette. Slide this in here so you can see it better. 
Um, and of course, this is an old toothbrush. You can see this is my painting toothbrush. So um, if you've got an old one laying around, you can sort of designate now as your painting toothbrush. But of course, you can just grab these at the dollar store. They're super cheap. It doesn't have to be a fancy toothbrush or anything like that. Um, but of course, once you use it, it's now your painting toothbrush. So don't use it again. Um, so I'm going to dip it in my water. And I'm going to water down my aqua. And again, we're looking for kind of an inky consistency. And I also should note too, um, you want to make sure that when you do this, your uh, space is protected. So I've got this giant sheet of palette paper here, which I'm actually going to move to make sure I don't make too big of a mess um, to protect my table. And your hands will get messy as well. So of course, full guard acrylic paint um, comes off your hands with warm soap and water. It's non-toxic and water-based, so I'm not worried about getting on my hands. But if you are, for whatever reason, maybe throw on a, a rubber glove or something because it will get a little bit messy. Okay, so my, my paint is pretty watered down. Hopefully you can kind of see the consistency there. It's, a, it's pretty inky. So now I'm just going to tap off any of the excess. Oh, that's wet. And I'm going to hold my pumpkin kind of diagonally so you can see it and I can see it. And I'm going to rake my finger, I use my thumb, it's what's comfortable for me, across the bristles of the brush. And I'll show you here what it's going to do. It's going to create that really awesome fine splattered effect. So I'm going to do that all over my pumpkin and it's going to give us, you can see it's kind of drippy here, so that's why you want to do some tests. It's going to give us a really fine splatter that just makes it look kind of vintagey and distressed and makes it look very uh, fallish. I'm going to do it all over my pumpkin on my leaf, on my stem, on my plaid, just to give it a little bit of detail here at the end, kind of finish it off and put that last final touch. You can see how I said your thumb will get a little bit messy, which is okay. Picking up more paint as I need it, making sure to get the stem. And again, I do recommend you maybe do a couple practice ones on a paper towel or something just to kind of get the hang of it, make sure you have the right consistency, make sure you kind of get a feel for where it's going to go, <laughs> make sure you know how to aim your brush before you just start flicking paint. Um, but it's really fun. It's a lot of fun. A lot of people especially um, in the craft painting world, we'll do this with like a black paint at the end, just to kind of finish off their design and give it that little extra bit of detail. Um, it's a lot of fun to do. And that is the final step for our Sweather Wetter pumpkin, guys. Um, so again, I hope you guys had so much fun. Um, this was the first time I think that we've painted a pumpkin for our Let's Paint Live, so I had so much fun painting with you guys. If you decided to post your, if, if you painted along and decided to post your painting online, make sure to hashtag plaid crafts. Like we mentioned earlier, if you're not already a member, join our uh, Facebook group called Let's Paint with Plaid, a really great community of artists, and we'd love to have you. Um, keep an eye out after this event is done. So next tomorrow morning, probably um, the uh, event listing for our November Let's Paint Live will pop up, which is another really fun fall painting. I'm excited to do with you guys, and we'll see you then. Bye.